Hey everyone, today I'm taking a look at iRacing on the RTX 4090 in VR on the HP Reverb G2. So as per previous videos, I'm going to be running the G2 at 90Hz on maximum native run resolution. And I'm going to be doing 5 live runs, 3090 and the 4090. And I'll be playing the video side by side so you can see how they perform on 5 different graphic presets. So first of all, we'll be starting on a class 3 preset, then class 2, then class 1, then class 1 with the virtual mirror turned off and the four internal mirrors turned on. And then finally, the same again, but with dynamic level of detail enabled. Then after the benchmarks have completed, we'll take a look at the data and I'll give you my thoughts. Keep to the right. 
Still there. Clear. Go on your left. Still there. Hold your line. Clear on the left. First up we'll take a look at the first run which was on the class 3 graphics preset so what I've got up here is the 3090 uh, log data first thing to notice is that the uh, GPU is being fairly well utilized 70% here and most of the frame GPU frame time is way below the 11 milliseconds needed for 90 Hertz there are some odd GPU frames going over here which isn't ideal uh, and you can double check that by just looking at the uh, 99th percentile which is basically the low 1% frame time and that's showing 11.7 .7. so that, that that would cause slight slowdowns in uh, VR or potentially even trigger motion projection if you've got it turned on so that was on the 3090 if we look at the equivalent run on the 4090 which is this one here uh, you can see a lot less gpu utilization the the card's not really breaking a sweat here and we're way under the 11 milliseconds uh, with no frames going over the uh, 11 millisecond mark here so no uh, low 99 percentile issues because we're showing what's 7.1 milliseconds so on that preset, no problems with either card and the 3090 is getting more utilization. So you, we're getting better use. We've just got that issue with some of the frames going over the 11 millisecond mark. If we now take a look at the second run on class two on the 3090, we've got some uh, quite unusual activity on this one. It's uh, spread out quite a lot. Some of it does go over the 11 millisecond mark here. And the thing to note is the uh, CPU utilization is also going over so we are in fact uh, CPU bound if you look at the 4090 you can see we're quite considerably CPU bottleneck now uh, so our GPU is only on 60% utilization most of our frame times around the six and a half millisecond mark if we step this up to the class one run which is the highest out of the box preset in the game 3090 is getting more GPU utilization again here, but the, the main issue is the uh, CPU bottlenecking that we're experiencing. A lot of the frame time is way under the 11 milliseconds, but we do have some going over that. So our low 90th percentile or low 1%, 99th percentile is in the 13.4 milliseconds region. So that's over the 11 milliseconds mark. So again, this would cause us some issues if we're actually playing this. So if you're sensitive to frame rate slowdowns in games, then this could be a potential issue for you. If we look at the equivalent on the 4090, which is this one, you can see our GPU time is way below here. In fact, we might have one or two frames going over. 99th percentile is still 
below the 11 millisecond mark. So only when you get to the 99.9th percentile, you can see we've got some frames going over the 11 milliseconds. But again, same story with the CPU. That's our main issue here, causing us uh, to have a less than ideal experience. So, so the next one is the class one with the virtual mirror turned off and the inside mirrors on. This causes a lot of havoc and it's mostly due to the CPU um, by the looks of things. You can see it's definitely a, a mirror image of what's going on here. So I think the problem here is just purely CPU bottlenecking again, and we're way over the 11 millisecond mark. Now I don't actually have the log data captured here for the um, 3090, but um, looking at the, the video footage, it looks very similar. Although it was the most immersive graphic preset driving this way, um, you can see on the 4090, we'll, it's not actually being used that much. And the main problem here is that this CPU bottlenecking. So the final run, which I'll bring up on the 3090, is the class one preset, but with the dynamic level of detail configured. So I'll just elaborate a bit on what that is. So what I did for this preset was based on the class one preset, with the virtual mirror off and the four internal mirrors on. And then I changed this dynamic level of detail setting to maintain a minimum 94 FPS. And then I set the frame limit at 100 FPS. So if we look back at the data for the 3090, you can see this is looking a lot better. We're getting good GPU utilization at about 85%. And most of the frames are below this 11 millisecond mark so it's not perfect but overall i thought it was quite a good driving experience and uh, gave me the best immersive experience in the car if we look at the equivalent run on the 4090 it's very similar indeed the gpu frame times are shifted to the left a bit and you can see the 4090 isn't having to work so hard so what we can see from this data is really there isn't that much of a difference between the 3090 and 4090 in terms of the driving experience. Yes, the GPU on the 4090 isn't having to work so hard. So to wrap up, what I've done is plot the information on this very high tech spreadsheet here, just so I can give you my final thoughts. So with the 3090, um, we've got the GPU frame time here. And as you can see, in most cases, even with the 3090, we're way below the 11 milliseconds. So that wasn't really an issue. And also looking at the, the median CPU frame time, it wasn't much of a problem either. So it's quite a mystery why really we're, we're at this low figure. And overall, the difference between the two, if we look at the GPU frame times between the 3090 and the 4090 here, we can calculate the uh, theoretical FPS. And as per previous videos, what we can do with the theoretical calculated FPS is work out the performance increase between the 3090 and 4090. So really there isn't that much of a difference, surprisingly, only on the most basic run on, on the first class three preset, we saw about 25% performance increase, but the other presets, there isn't much difference. And that's really is due to the CPU bottlenecking issue. One thing that is noteworthy though, I suppose, is that the 1% um, lows were quite a bit lower on the 3090 here. So if you look at those, we've got about 65% increase on class three and up to a 57% on class one and quite an unusual, just 15% difference on class two. So there you go. Maybe if you're more sensitive to um, the occasional slower frame rate, uh, the 1490 might be of benefit to you but I think generally speaking based on what I've seen so far even the 3090 seems a bit overkill for the uh, reverb g2 with the additional headroom that we've got available with both cards there is the option to turn super sampling maybe up a bit more and also if you race on triple screens I know a lot of people do with eye racing then having the extra performance on the 3090 may be of some benefit to you but, uh, because I don't have triple screens myself I'm not able to test this. Now to collect these benchmarks I had to run the game in open VR mode. This would let me run the FPS VR benchmarking software 
most users if you're going to play this in vr i recommend you run it in the open xr mode that'll give you a slight performance boost however when i gave it a brief test under the same class one scenario i was seeing the same bottlenecking that i was seeing in the open vr mode however open vr does give you an additional benefit of using the open xr toolkit which allows you to set foveated rendering, which essentially blurs the outside of the image that you don't really notice when you're driving. So if you've got a lower end graphics card, I recommend you run it this way and check out the OpenXR toolkit. So there you go, there's the benchmarks for the RTX 4090 on iRacing compared to the 3090. Don't forget, if you found this video useful, leave a thumbs up. And as usual, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.